Hey everybody, my name is Derek Christensen. I'm an estate planning and probate attorney in Dallas, Texas. Today I wanted to talk about the fascinating topic of trust, testamentary trusts and how they're kind of a fraudulent thing. <laughs> I know that's a, those are fighting words, but before I dive into them, I wanted to let you know how to reach out to me. You can email me directly, Derek, D-E-R-E-K, at legionlawpllc.com, or you can find me on my website, www.legionlawpllc.com. So let's dive right in. I actually found this story because I was talking to a potential client. She decided to go talk to multiple attorneys, which is totally understandable. But at the end of the day, one of the attorneys gave bad advice, in my opinion, that said, hey, if you want to avoid probate, you should get a testamentary trust. And I have no idea where this attorney got that because that just simply is not true. And the client was actually kind of confused because I was telling her you should get a revocable living trust and the other attorney was saying a testamentary trust is more appropriate. And her main objective was to completely and utterly avoid probate in any kind of capacity. So I wanted to talk to that about that today. Um, a testamentary trust, I'll define it right from the top. A testamentary trust is where you have a will. It's the document and inside the will there is a condition that says once this condition is accomplished, we will create a trust via this will. So the will has the will part and then there's a part that will create a trust inside the will. Now, in order to uh, have that trust come to pass, in order to have that trust activate, if you will, then you need to activate the will itself as well. And the only way that you can activate a testamentary trust is by taking that will going to court and getting a judge to approve the will itself, and then the trust will come into play. So if you're trying to avoid probate, like my potential client that I was talking to, it is literally impossible if you do it through a testamentary trust. So I have no idea where that other attorney got that information from, but I don't know. So I'll talk more about kind of a shady estate planning attorney tactics in the future, and probably in the next video actually, but currently this is one of those video, or this is one of those red flags to me that indicate the attorney is trying to make more money off the client than normal. I'll talk about that in the other video. But nonetheless, the difference between a revocable living trust and a testamentary trust is that the revocable living trust is its own separate document. It is completely independent of the will. It is activated the moment you sign it, and it is going to follow its own rules. It does not need to be activated by any other document, including a will. And so when it's separate, and it's already activated, it is currently alive whenever you are alive, that means that if you put your assets inside that trust, it will all the assets inside that trust will avoid probate um, automatically. You don't have to go to probate to determine if you're going to avoid probate, just like a testamentary trust. So those are the differences between the two, and honest to goodness, I find very, very little use in having testamentary trusts. More often than not, the only time they're actually appropriate is if a testamentary trust is um, part of a plan, but the, the client is okay with going through probate, they want to go through probate, and um, sometimes, it, it, for instance, a, a testamentary trust would be appropriate if the will says, hey, I'm gonna give all my stuff to A, B, and C, but if A has passed away, then I need to create and trust, put all the A stuff into that trust, and hold that trust for a long period of time until A's children are 30 years old or whatever. So those are the times where you would want to have a testamentary trust, but even then, they're not, I mean, there are so many other ways to approach it. So, and again, the testamentary trust should not be the main focus of the estate plan. You should not be able to say, yes, I have a testamentary trust, I'm good to go, all is well, probate isn't a concern anymore. As long as you understand, you are going to go through probate with a testamentary trust, then use them all you want, but I don't see why you'd want to go through probate. That's the big issue here. <laughs> Either way, uh, I, I think I've you know said that a million times by now, but the main focus of a revocable living trust is that it's separate, it will be activate immediately, you transfer your assets in, and all those assets will avoid probate. A testamentary trust, again, is inside a will. The only way you can use it is if you activate the will through probate, so why don't you just use a normal will that doesn't have any trusts in it? I don't know. Maybe those rare circumstances I mentioned. But either way, if you hear testamentary trust, you should be very, very suspicious of what's going on because they are not very useful. They do not accomplish really anything of substance. 
and they aren't really useful unless there's an extreme circumstance. So, and even those extreme circumstances can get resolved by other things. So either way, I'm not a fan of testamentary trusts. If you hear testamentary trusts, you should absolutely talk to another attorney about that. Double check what the other attorney is saying because uh, at the end of the day, it is, um, it's a red flag, like I said, a red flag, red, red flag for that potential client. So if you're worried about that flag or any other flags that might pop up in your estate planning journey, uh, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to receive any emails and respond to them. You can get me at Derek, D-E-R-E-K, at LegionLawPLLC.com, or you can find me at my website where you can go to our Contact Us page and schedule a free over-the-phone consultation directly onto my calendar at www.LegionLawPLLC.com. So with that, thank you so much and have a great day.